After Detailer is an extension for Automatic 1, which can automatically in-paint the face, hands and body of a character after the image generation process, helping to save you time and achieve more accurate results. This video will cover what each of the options do with examples, so you can build your own workflow and you will see this extension being used in my other videos. Drop a like to help this video hit the algorithm and check the description for support links and resources. But enough spilling tea, let me give it to you bite sized. So the first option is enable after detailer and this will enable the extension and allow both the first and second tabs to influence your image depending on whether you have a model selected. You then have two tabs called first and second. These tabs contain your settings for the corresponding model you decide to use and operate independently from each other, meaning you can use up to two models at the same time. You have two prompt boxes called prompt and negative prompt, and this is where you can describe additional changes to be made to the in-painted regions of your image when the after detailer is being applied following the image's generation. But if this is left blank, it will use what's in your main prompt box above by default. For example, these prompts have modified features prompted in After Detailer, and you can see those adjustments here. The effects aren't as strong as we didn't include it in our primary prompt box, but this can be useful for adjusting an in-painted area specifically. And lastly, the models correspond with a portion of the body you want to in-paint. There are quite a few options to choose from and it can be overwhelming to figure out which one you need so let's quickly explore what each model does looking at the yolo models which inpaint the face there's a noticeable difference between the images on both models the results are vastly improved but i find that yolo van provides the better results looking at the media pipe models there's a couple you can use and they all produce different results to varying degrees of quality Face Mesh seems to provide the worst results, while Face Short seems to provide the best results. But this may differ depending on which seed you use, so consider these as samples rather than absolutes. Face Full is another good option, and Eyes Only will in-paint only the eyes, which may be useful if the rest of your image is fine. Now, on the hand model, there were very minimal adjustments to the hands, and that's because using After Detailer alone isn't enough to correct the problem, especially with the default settings. If you wanted more accurate hands, then you would have to consider using additional techniques like negative prompts, embeddings, and even control net, but this can be useful for making small corrections. Lastly, here's a look at the full body where it attempts to adjust everything in one model. The results are weaker across the board where the body is improved, but the face and hands are not particularly good, especially on the anime model. Now, let's take a look at the options under the detection tab, and I'll be using the following prompts so we can get some people in the background and see how the after detailer impacts the subject and background elements. I'll also be comparing the default settings against any changes so we can see the impact in real time. The first option we have is the detection model confidence threshold, and this will ensure that only objects with a detection model confidence above this threshold are used for in-painting. This can be useful for reducing the number of background characters whose faces are in-painted. Mask only the top K largest is a setting which lets you determine how many masks should be applied to the image based on the largest objects detected. In this instance, the letter K represents the number of masks we should apply. You can see that the mask is being applied to only the largest face when we use a value of 1, which can be useful for applying the mask to a certain number of faces or to the subject of the image. The mask minimum and max ratio tells after detail of what the minimum and maximum area for the detected mask can be, and this is used for detecting masks that are of a certain size. I tested this with a few values and struggled to get it working, but you can see the differences in these images. The mask X and Y offset will move the mask in the X or Y direction, leaving the unmasked portions of the image unaffected by the in painting. You can see this in the following image where the mask is moving and the unmasked portions are not being in-painted. The mask erosion slash dilation will reduce or enlarge the size of the mask and in this comparison, I've ramped up the denoising strength to 1 so you can clearly see where the mask is affecting the image and on the mask erosion of minus 50, we get a mask that covers less of the face. The mask merge mode comes with three options where none will in-paint each mask Merge will merge the mask, then perform the in-painting, and Merge and Invert will merge all of the mask 
and then inpaint the unmasked areas of the image. I find that using the none option and then painting each mask individually leads to better results as the other options resulted in lower quality images where all the faces were distorted. Inpaint mask blur refers to how sharp the edge of the mask is when applying it for inpainting and this can be useful for controlling how much the mask will blend with everything outside the mask. Even on a value of zero, the mask is hardly noticeable but can be seen when zooming in so consider using the default value. Inpaint only mask will ensure that only the mask portion of your image is affected by the inpainting rather than the entire image. For example, if you turn this image off and then modify the height and width, it will apply to the entire image rather than the inpainted portion alone, which can lead to a lower quality output or your image being generated the wrong size. Inpaint only mask padding pixels determines how much of the area around the mask should be used to generate the image helping provide context as to what should be generated within the mask. I typically leave this at a lower value as the mask itself is usually the context. You will also see various checkboxes for use separate and what this does is allow you to use a value for the corresponding setting that is independent from the main setting. So for example, I'm generating my images at 576 by 832 but I may want my masked area to be at a higher resolution so I'll enable use separate and set my resolution for the masked area. This will only impact the masked area if you have the inpaint only mask selected. Otherwise, the setting will affect your entire image, such as changing its size. You then have a ton of pretty standard settings which you can use to modify your image, such as steps, sampler, clip skip and CFG scale. Remember to use separate if you want to modify these outside of your primary settings located outside of the extension. The inpaint denoising strength determines how strongly your new inpainted area should match what was originally there. A lower value will keep your inpainted face closer to your generated image, while a higher denoising strength will change the face completely. Inpaint width and height will determine the resolution of the mask used to inpaint the image. Typically, a higher value will yield better results, but having a value way higher than the size of your entire image can lead to odd looking faces so I like to keep mine the same as my image's resolution. Noise multiplier for image to image will let you control the amount of noise which is added to the generated image through after detailer and in all honesty I found absolutely nothing that tells me why this should even exist yet alone be useful for the average user. If I find something I'll pin a comment but it's there as an option for those who want to give it a try. Then lastly restore faces after a detailer will ensure that the restore faces option is used after the inpainting is complete, although this option is somewhat redundant as the after detailer produces far better results. We have access to control net, which allows you to select a model such as inpaint, scribble, lineup, open pose and tile to use in influencing your image. You can select the weight and guidance start and end just as you would when using the normal control net extension. But unfortunately, I couldn't get this working without using the main control net model which seems to go counter to its functionality but perhaps I've made a mistake so do let me know. But hopefully you found that breakdown helpful and if you enjoyed, like the video, subscribe and a big thanks to all the supporters of the channel. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.